Hi, I'm Paris, and I'm coming up on my two-year anniversary of having proton therapy radiation for prostate cancer. And there were some side effects at the time I was having it. There have been some residual side effects. But what I really wasn't expecting was a brand new side effect to start after two years. Now, they did mention this side effect in all the paperwork you have to go through and sign that, yes, I'm aware this can cause this and this. I had gone through all the paperwork with chemo, and that's a long list of potential side effects, but you have to sign that you're aware of those risks and you're willing to take them. So after the chemo risk side effect listings, I thought, can there really be anything worse here for the proton therapy radiation for prostate cancer? So I did go through the list and I was aware this could happen. I remember thinking at the time, yeah, some of these are real low probability, one or two people out of a hundred will have that, and that's not going to be me, but now it's me. It started about six weeks ago, and the first time I thought, nah, it's probably something else. Surely it can't be that not just now I'm having this side effect from the radiation. But by the second time it happened, I thought, oh no, I think it is. And so I wrote to the folks up at the Proton Therapy Center and said, I remember in the side effects list, it did say there was a chance of this. And I do remember the doctor telling me, if you ever have this happen, contact us first. The technical name for this condition is radiation proctitis. And that proc in there is something you don't want to have in there. More common term for it would be rectal bleeding. And it's as fun as it sounds. Now, in my case, it's not an ongoing continual thing. Maybe for some people it is. It seems very variable, both in how long it takes to happen, if it's going to happen to you. For some people, it's right after treatment or after one year, two years, three years. You can be fine, like I was, and then all of a sudden, boom. In my case, once every week or two, it's been happening since it started about six weeks ago. And again, the first time it happened, I thought, oh, yeah, it's, you know, hemorrhoid or something to explain the blood. But by the second time, there was more blood than could be explained by that. And as I mentioned, it wasn't that the blood was leaking. It wasn't a continual thing, but it was pooling up because the prostate is right there near the end of the rectum, near the, the exit doors. And when you're upright, of course, any liquid is going to go down to the lowest point. So when it's happening, you end up with this couple tablespoons of blood pooled up there, which stays there until it goes through the doorway. Now that can be with a bowel movement, but if you eat a high fiber diet like I do and have a fair amount of gas, that can also expel the blood in a rather messy way. Let's just say I left a stain on the cushion on the sofa where I was sitting when it happened that second time. Now it could have been worse, I could have been out in public, at least I was home, but knowing that it could happen at any time had me paranoid about going out in public, and we actually had a rodeo and concert to go see the night after that second time that it happened. Uh, my daughter had come home from college and we were all going to the the Rodeo Austin to see the rodeo and to see Flo Rida, who I really didn't know who that was, but my kids told me and played a few of his songs. And so it was a great show, but talk about paranoid. So fortunately, I live in a household of women and I got a quick introduction to feminine hygiene products because women have been having to deal with this since time immemorial. But I was fine the rest of the night. The next day, of course, I kept something in there to catch anything that would leak out, but nothing did. And then a few days went by, nothing else happened. I stopped wearing any protection in there until it was like another week, and it happened again. So I'm trying to think, well, I, of course, I wrote to the Proton Center and said, what's going on and what do we do? And also trying to think about what was I doing, what was I, you know, I eating, what exactly activities was I doing, what might be triggering it to happen. And I realized on days when I had been particularly physically active, it seemed like it was happening the day after that, which is not good when you're trying for your health to be more physically active. And I have to admit, I was feeling pretty down after that second time that it happened in the why me kind of mindset, but that only lasted a few days. I had I learned about the protection I could take to minimize the damage from it happening. And I decided I wasn't gonna let it stop me from doing the things I wanna do, which just so happened to be 
fairly physical in the upcoming months. Now, of course, I went online to read up on this and to get myself suitably paranoid about things. I was already pretty paranoid because it's a thing that you don't know when it's going to happen unless I can really see that clear trigger over time. So I've got to give it some time to see if that trend continues. But went online, read about it, found that in some people it's self-limiting, which means it'll happen for a while and then it stops. In some people it continues at that level. In some people it gets worse. They do have a, a treatment for it. Well, let me explain briefly why this is happening. So I needed radiation treatment for prostate cancer. I had chemo first, which shrunk the tumor back up, but it had gotten outside of the prostate in that general area. So when they came up with my course of treatment for the radiation, they, I, even though the proton therapy radiation is supposed to be more precise, and so you're not supposed to have as many of these side effects as with other types of radiation for cancer, I think they, they had to hit more areas to get all the places that the cancer was originally in the original MRI. And I remember them telling me too that they were doing um, radiation shots to the lymph nodes in that area. So I had a large dose of radiation over nine weeks. You might even say a buttload of radiation considering how it's turned out. So I understand that with all the different angles they had to do to get the radiation where it needed to be, some of that may have passed through the rectum. So what happens is radiation damages cells and you don't always see the effect right away. So what can happen with the rectum is getting irradiated. The cells sort of suddenly realize, oh look, there's a bunch of damage, we need to heal that. And they send out blood vessels, tiny little ones like the capillaries that aren't sort of with other tissue and so it's as near as I can think to explain it it's sort of like again with women and the uterus and at that time of the month there's a stuff that develops there and then when the body says it's not needed it comes out and so I do I have a uterus in my rectum I'm hoping not but in some ways, it's kind of like that. It's a whole bunch of collection of very dense blood vessels that form. And they're okay until maybe a, a hard um, bowel movement tears it. And so you'll have bleeding. Or what I think is happening in my case, if um, through the strenuous exercise, if there's some pulling going on, the, the material sort of gets torn and it bleeds and the blood collects and then the material stops bleeding until the next time. So how do you cure this? Well, there's certain lifestyle things you can do to reduce the incidence of it. And if it gets too bad, you're losing too much blood, that's not good. They can go in there with lasers and they, they cauterize that tissue, burn it out, and then hopefully with those blood vessels closed up, it doesn't decide it needs to do it again and then you're done with it. But that's sort of the most extreme solution. It, I think it, it has to be fairly bad for them to want to do that. So in my research, I read that actually about 5% of the people who have the proton therapy radiation for the prostate cancer go on to develop the rectal bleeding. So that's a higher number than I remember thinking at the time. So 5%, yeah, that's one in 20. Yeah, I could be one of one in 20. But wait, folks at the Proton Center sent me an information page about how to deal with this. And it starts out saying, post-treatment rectal bleeding, this can happen after treatment in about 9% of patients. 9%? Now we're up to almost 1 in 10 people. And what they recommend is stop any blood thinners. I take baby aspirin for heart issues, so I get to balance. I, anyway, I figured I'd stop it for a couple weeks. And since I've stopped the aspirin, for I guess two, just over two weeks now, it hasn't happened again. They also asked to avoid all dairy products, that's fine, I eat pretty much vegan. Also to cut out fresh, raw fruits and vegetables. Well, that's a lot harder when you're vegan. Also to minimize strenuous activity, heavy lifting, exercising. That's what I'm supposed to be doing right now for some uh, mountain climbing I have planned for just a few weeks from now and further through the spring. So it's been a balance to not overdo it. They also say the bleeding will not resolve overnight, and it hasn't. 
It may take some time, possibly several weeks. If it gets worse, contact them again about this. Okay, so we're up to 9% of patients experiencing this in this handout. However, the message I was sent in response to my initial query in the patient portal says, most of our patients develop occasional rectal bleeding after treatment. Most. Most meaning more than 50%, right? That is the meaning of most. So how did we get from I think in one or two percent of people have this to over half the people have this? Now I signed the paper saying yes, I'm aware this is a possible side effect. I remember the oncologist telling me if you see blood in your stool even a year, two years, three years out, you call us and let us know. So <laughs> that should have been a little light going off saying this really could happen. But to say that most of the people who have the treatment experience this, I'm really thinking the whole rectal bleeding thing was undersold at the time I went to find out about the proton therapy treatment. Now, would I have not had it done because of the risk of this, because realizing maybe I have over a 50% chance of it happening? No, I still would have gone and done it. I still think proton therapy radiation with its exact focusing, even if because of all the areas they had to radiate in me also meant getting part of the rectum, I still think that was the best choice. I'm still hoping this condition will be self-limiting or at the very least that I can find what I'm doing that's triggering it and then modify what I'm doing, but I hope it won't mean I have to actually cut out doing some things that I would like to be doing. But I am still going to Guadalupe Peak to give it my best to climb to the top again, even if it turns into a Hansel and Gretel situation where I've left a trail that I can use to find my way back out. All right, that was kind of gross, but cut me some slack. I've been on a medication that's kept my testosterone down to zero for two and a half years now. I've had kidney stones twice. This was quite a while ago, but that's the pain that's supposedly the closest thing a man can experience to what a woman feels giving birth. And now I'm learning all about feminine hygiene products and I actually pay attention to the TV commercials where they're pouring the blue liquid in to say, oh look, isn't this prayer more absorbent than the other ones? And if the day comes that I start reviewing products with wings, other than hummingbird feeders, somebody take me aside and say, don't go there. And barring that, I'll see you on the next review. There are so many choices and you don't want to stress. You want your health food and home receiving only the best. That's what we're here for. We give honest reviews. Paris DX.